Hi, welcome back to Focal Point on AFR Talk. The program is Focal Point. I am your congenial, convivial, and amiable host, Brian Fisher. This is Focal Point, the home of muscular Christianity on conservative talk radio. And we were just talking in the last segment about the problem with sexual assault in the military. It's become a problem that has really spiked since 2010. And it brings up the larger issue of the push on the part of military officials, including this commander-in-chief, to put women into frontline combat. And we want to talk with an expert about whether this is a good or bad idea. I think my uh, sentiments on the subject uh, are no secret to anybody that listens to this program. But I'd like to welcome Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis. He's been a guest on this program before. He's the author of a brand-new book, Deadly Consequences, How Cowards Are Pushing Women into uh, combat. So, uh, Colonel McGinnis, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Well, thank you for having me, Brian. Well, it's great to have you on. And so, Bob, you've got this new book out, and you're tipping your hand. You don't think it's a good idea pushing women into combat. And th there are two elements to the title of this book, and I want to encourage people to get it. But the, the first two words, deadly consequences. So I want you to elaborate just for a minute on that. What are the consequences of putting women into combat, number one. Why do you use the word deadly? And then number two, you accuse cowards of being responsible for this push. I want you to explain what you mean by that. But let's begin with the deadly consequences. Why do you use that term to describe putting women into combat? Well, I outline eight specific ones in the book and elaborate on them. Certainly, we're going to compromise standards, and that means we'll have a less effective fighting force. Uh, we're obviously going to put women where they don't belong physically and psychologically, which is another issue. Certainly the physical suffering because of the environment that we're talking about where you smash heads, cut throats, and wrestle to the death. Uh, that's the sort of environment which I describe in some of the battle scenes in the book at Najaf, Iraq, uh, certainly a number of them in Vietnam and in Korea. Uh, we'll talk about in here the, the killing of our warrior spirit, which is really a a masculine mindset that makes our fighters vicious, aggressive, and effective, and yet the integration of men and women, as moms and dads of America know, uh, in certain places, forced, especially for sentiment situations, is very significant and damaging. The idea that you can you know, reduce sexual assaults and sexual unwanted sexual contact by forcing young women into the most hyper-masculine environment is absolutely ludicrous. Uh, certainly forcing uh, our retention rates and the declining quality of the forces I address. And then I, I think finally, but most importantly, to moms and dads that are uh, very uh, kind of removed from this issue, well, you're not going to for very long because, because of what the Obama administration has done, inevitably, and I'm talking about in the next year or so, your young daughters when they turn 18, just like your young sons, are going to have to, sign up for the selected service. And then when you say that, well, maybe we don't need a draft in the future. Well, I'm sorry to say that uh, the world is far more threatening today than it was only 10 years ago, and it's going to be far more in the future. And when you combine that with a radical downsizing, the administration is going through and downsizing the number of fighting forces, downsizing the number of uh, new technologies we bring aboard, et cetera, uh, when you put all three of those elements together, I think inevitably we are going to be forcing our young daughters into direct ground combat, which, of course, is going to be incredibly bad for them and also for the country. Well, let me ask you just one question to follow up on what you said, because I believe you're right. This is inevitably going to lead to a draft. And part of the reason is because I believe retention rates are going to fall as the military becomes increasingly feminized, as it becomes increasingly emasculated. It becomes less and less a place where young, virile manhood in America is going to say, hey, that's the outfit I want to be a part of. And so it's going to affect recruitment rates. It's going to affect retention rates. I think we're already seeing that. And I, I would like you to comp, uh, comment on that if you, if you can. We know we've got this story, and I've never seen anybody else suggest this, but we've got this story now where the Air Force is having a huge, a huge problem hanging on to experienced, highly trained combat pilots. And they're offering them these huge bonuses to stay in place. And I'm wondering if some of that, you know, and maybe it has to do with higher wages in commercial aviation and all that. But I have to wonder, uh, Colonel McGinnis, if some of that 
problem with retention is the fact this is no longer the Air Force that these men signed up to fly jets for. And so they're thinking, hey, I'm not sure I want to be a part of this outfit anymore. No, the social engineering by the Obama administration is really radicalizing the force and chasing a lot of very good people, people that are principled and value-based, uh, out of the armed forces. Uh, now, I'm standing outside the Pentagon, and I've been doing this stuff for 43 years, a long time, it seems like. Uh, certainly have seen the social engineering, and that's one of the things, one of the motivations I have in writing the book is to expose the truth. I'm not running for political office. I'm not trying to get a star. Uh, I'm just trying to share the truth uh, after 40-plus years of experience in writing about these issues and researching both inside and outside the Pentagon. So, uh, yeah, uh, our young people are not uh, trying to assess into the military like they used to, and we're not retaining a lot of people. And as soon as the economy turns around, I suspect we're going to be in a crisis trying to get quality people uh, into the armed forces. And it's a high-tech military today, a very difficult environment where we need people of values and people that have uh, good smarts, but I'm afraid we're going to be chasing them away. You know, uh, I'm talking here with Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis, experienced military man, graduate of uh, West Point, uh, former uh, Army uh, Ranger, got his airborne wings. He's seen tours in four infantry divisions and served in 1993 on the Army's Chief of Staff Study Group dealing with homo the issue of homosexuals in the military back when uh, President Bill Clinton uh, implemented the don't ask, don't tell policy. But I'm looking at a piece here, Washington Times from yesterday, uh, Colonel McGinnis, Washington Times, Rowan Scarborough. Public statements from the Pentagon, since it removed the ban on direct ground combat jobs for women, signal that the armed services plan to change their physical standards to ensure integration of the sexes. In other words, some physical standards would be lowered for men and women on the argument that certain tasks are outdated or irrelevant. Well, they're not outdated, in my judgment. They're not irrelevant because we need a certain level of stamina and strength for soldiers to be able to do their jobs. So right here, you've already got uh, the Washington Times saying that officials are admitting we are going to lower standards in order to make it possible for women to qualify for combat. Well, they have to lower standards. The standards of combat proven, and not all men can meet these standards. You know, when you consider the average woman in the Army has 37 pounds less muscle lean than the man, she has half the body, upper body strength, she has two-thirds the cardiovascular fitness, and women, I know this is a surprise to some, are anatomically different than men in terms of the ability to carry weight and so forth. So, you know, Moms and dads of America know these differences. Apparently, the senior leadership of the Pentagon and those in Congress, which ultimately are responsible for uh, setting the rules and regulations for who serves in the military, just are out to lunch when it comes to understanding the differences between boys and girls. One last question, uh, Colonel McGinnis, before I let you go, it has to do with homosexuals in the military. You worked on the Army's Chief of Staff Study Group in 1993 on this issue. I just read some excerpts from the New York Times. I, I talked in the last segment about the rising number of sexual assaults in the military. Now the majority of the victims of sexual assault in the military are males. The majority of the perpetrators are males. It's male on male. Rape is the primary problem now uh, in the military. And the New York Times says there's been a spike in this since 2010. Well, what happened in 2010? That's when we dropped the ban on open homosexuality in the military. And yesterday the president's out there saying, we're going to crack down. These are crimes. I'm going to bring the hammer down. And in reality, it seemed to me, uh, Colonel McGinnis, if, if we look at the numbers that we're getting from the Pentagon, Pentagon, when the president says he's going to crack down on sexual assault, he's promising to bring the hammer down on homosexual predators in the military. Do you think he, he even he is aware of what he was saying? No, he's not. And he won't do anything about it because of his political connections with the homosexual community. You know, you're right, the numbers uh, suggest that we have a very serious male-on-male sexual assault problem in the armed forces. Uh, I don't know how many of those that involve homosexual perpetrators. Certainly, uh, there's a portion. Uh, you know, even today, uh, there was in the paper in the AP reported that, you know, they're going to give uh, so-called homosexual couples uh, 10 days free time off to go get married in states so they can come back and 
collect benefits from the military, and then, of course, they're going to award benefits in spite of the fact that the DOMA decision of, of June uh, from the Supreme Court didn't say that they were necessarily eligible for that in the federal government. But, you know, this radical administration is moving post in, in that direction. Uh, you know, no wonder they're going for women in direct round combat. They could care less. Hmm. Well, you know, it's intriguing to me, and I, I would think, uh, Colonel McGinnis, that maybe, you know, and th- this is maybe a bridge too far for most people. We look back at the the stormtroopers that surrounded Adolf Hitler. They were most, mostly hyper-masculine homosexuals. And you look at the, the way in which Christians are being kind of drummed out of the military. Religious liberty is being squashed. Chaplains are being told if you're an evangelical conservative Christian, you've got no place in the military. If you've got a problem with our policy on homosexuals, you need to find another line of work. You just need to get with the program or get out. In the meantime, we're making the military a very welcoming place for active homosexuals. As you pointed out, there's very unlikely to be any kind of severe punishment that the president threatened for someone who's involved in homosexual behavior, even if it's non-consensual uh, in the military. So do you think we're in danger of this shift moving Christians out of the military and bringing aggressive homosexuals into the military in their place? Oh, of course. And given the, the current regime that runs the place, that uh, they'll permit that. I'll, I'll tell you, last month, or no, it was in June, when they had uh, LBGT uh, Celebration Day, they brought in uh, Valerie Jarrett, the, the president's advisor, and she was just you know, really promoting homosexuality, and they have giant posters inside the Pentagon promoting homosexuality. You know, it's been a phenomenal shift in 20 years since I was working on Burning Up Don't Tell, and it's a sad day for America. Our guest has been retired Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis, author of a brand new book. I urge you to get Deadly Consequences, How Cowards Are Pushing Women into Combat, published by Regnery, uh, just published in July 29, so it's brand new, hot off the press. Uh, Colonel McGinnis, thank you very much for taking time to be with us today. Well, thanks for having me, Brian. You bet. Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis talking about uh, these disastrous changes in the military, including putting women in combat. Focal Point, AFR Talk, Brian Fisher is my name, back right after these brief messages.